about the Bank of England making a really shocking announcement and observation? Yeah, the Bank of England is basically the um, economy driver and uh, legendary keeper of the statistics for the United Kingdom. And they are out with a shocking report this week, Kent, saying this could be the worst economic catastrophe to hit England, get this, in 300 years. It's that bad in the United Kingdom. You know what's amazing is the fact that they've even tracked it that closely for 300 years, the fact that they would know that it literally has slid, and that 300 years ago, actually 306 years ago, I believe it was, uh, they were down, their economy shrank 15% uh, or 14%, and now it's 15%. That's just really wild. Yeah, this is the worst since before America in early 1700s. I mean, it's that bad for people that don't realize the magnitude of the losses and the depletion of savings and earnings and the ability to go out and survive. There is such an economic depression, as you said, worldwide that has not been called that yet. The recovery is going to be critical to pull the world out of this. Now, the one good news in this story that I want people to focus on is this. Everything was perfect and hitting on all cylinders. And I'm just talking about economies worldwide before the economic shutdown mandated by all world governments. The reality is those underlying qualities are still there. They have to be reinvigorated. And if it happens fast enough, we will come back and it'll be OK. The question is, will governors stop being dictators and deciding what's best for the people? Or will they listen to the people like in many states where the most regressive policies are being instituted, like California, like Michigan, like New York? The people are taking to the streets as you predicted they would, and it's happening across the country, and the governors have to listen, or A, they're going to be out of business, meaning they'll be voted out, and B, the people are going to open up themselves anyway, and the cops in many cases, especially county sheriffs, are saying, I'm not going to enforce unconstitutional law anymore. The first, the second, the fifth, the tenth, the fourteenth amendment all apply here, and they've all been stepped on. Yep. And by the way, you know, one thing a lot of people don't realize is that county sheriffs are very unique when it comes to law enforcement. They take their oath to the Constitution only. So they're there. All they have to do is defend the Constitution. That's all their job is. So they've got amazing latitude when it comes to this kind of stuff, which, you know, a lot of these county sheriffs are good friends of mine. And I love watching them going out there and arresting federal agents for getting on farmers' properties or ranchers' properties and things like that. And I think what you're seeing now, even in California, you're seeing a couple of sheriffs stepping up and defending their constituents against tyrannical governments. Exactly correct. And I hope it spreads and I hope it becomes a wildfire. And people like Newsom in California, Cuomo in New York, Whitmer in Michigan finally say, whoa, 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 I'm losing control. I've stepped too far. I'm going to step back. And when that happens and economies open up and people go back to work, we won't see 24 seven news coverage that is intended to scare you three quarters to death people will go back to work and we can have a regular world again. Yeah, I can't wait for that. Barry, it is always great to have you on here. You're amazing. And, and bringing the knowledge in of things that I did not know. Thanks, Kent. And anything that people want to look up, we're doing a lot of videos, go to americantruthproject.org, please, and sign up. Or text the word truth to 88202 and you'll get this video and all our videos for free. We never charge for content.